I've seen that t-shirt before. I know, I'm running out. We were gonna do a thing where I wore a new stupid funny t-shirt in every video. Then I started to run out very quickly. I'm really gonna have to start shilling the shit out of that like, comment, subscribe if I want to get more t-shirts. <laughs> It's well known that President John F. Kennedy served in the Navy during World War II and won a medal for heroism. What's less well known though is how badass Kennedy acted on that fateful day. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Before we get into that though, I should probably talk about how Kennedy came to enlist in the Navy in the first place. It's well known today that President Kennedy suffered almost his entire adult life with horrific, crippling back pain. Something that, when he went to enlist for the army during World War II, immediately disqualified him from service. This didn't sit well with the future president, and he used his family connections and political pull to have himself enlisted in the Navy, making him one of the first people in history to use wealth, power, and connections to make sure they didn't dodge the draft. Which is strange. You don't often hear stories like that, do you? When's the last time you heard a story about someone rich and powerful using that wealth and power to make sure they served in the military? And it makes you think twice about enlisting, huh? Nope. The rest of the story, you need to keep in mind that everything that Kennedy did, he did while suffering from horrific crippling back pain, which is as anyone who suffers from back pain will tell you, is the worst kind of pain. He's always portrayed as like this really youthful, virile president who just like fucked everything that moved. And he was a very, very sick man who just hid it very well. I've had back pain once or twice. I've hurt my leg, I've hurt my arms. I've fallen downstairs and like cut my hands open. I've been bitten by a dog here and I've like that ripped open. Nothing put me on my ass harder than just pulling my back. Because you can't do anything. Every movement you do needs your back. Like, even lifting your arm moves a muscle in your back. It's terrible. There's some scar in your arm, it's visible in the videos. I can tell a story of how I got that. It's a terrible story. It's one of those things that people point out that you can never unsee. I'll do that and then everyone watching at home will be like, oh no, now I can't unsee this thing. It's something weird about my hands. And when I point it out, everyone watching at home will be unable to not see it. We'll get to that anyway. After enlisting in the Navy, he stopped staring at my hands. <laughs> <laughs> After enlisting in the Navy and working his way through the ranks, Kennedy found himself in charge of a PT-109. But here's the thing, Kennedy only managed to get that job after voluntarily putting himself forward for training so that he could get himself away from a cushy desk job. I hope you're starting to see a repeating pattern here, notably absent of folks, because boy did Kennedy run out of those early in life. In 1943, Kennedy's boat was hit by a Japanese destroyer. And when I say hit, I mean it in the most literal sense possible, as in his boat was literally hit by a boat that cut his boat in half. Yes, the, uh, the impact killed two sailors outright and threw the rest into the water. It also caused a big fuel leak, which caused much of the ocean around the wreckage to catch fire. But that only spurned Kennedy on, and that's actually when he got the most pissed off. I like the idea that they hit his boat and he was stood there and went, well, now I'm annoyed. <laughs> it says a lot about your ability to detect torpedoes when you miss the boat that launches them driving into you and cutting your boat in half. Maybe that was the plan. They can detect torpedoes. You know what they can't detect? Boats. Us. <laughs> they do have eyes. I like the idea though. But that's why Kennedy was so annoyed. He's like, oh man, this looks really shit. I'm going to lose my job for this one. I've got to be a proper big dick baller hero in this one because if otherwise it's going to be inept captain somehow misses boat. Despite being injured himself, Kennedy dove into the water, which remember was on fire, and dragged three of his crewmen to relative safety, which is a translation for the patch of sea smart enough to not be on fire around John F. Kennedy at the time. After 12 hours of clinging to what remained of the ship, Kennedy and the other 10 survivors decided that they need to make a swim for safety. However, the problem was that that would have to be a five hour swim through shark infested water at night. That's a bad day. I mean, Kennedy had a few bad days in his life. Yeah, I would probably think of one that he had that was worse, but <laughs> that was probably up there in his top 10. Mm. A problem for the crew though was what to do with a sailor called Patrick McMahon who was so injured he couldn't swim or even float convincingly. Unwilling to even entertain the idea of leaving a man behind, Kennedy put a life vest on McMahon, put one of the straps in between his teeth and swam for five hours to a nearby uninhabited island. After arriving at the island and making sure everyone was safe, Kennedy stripped down to his underwear and then swam to another uninhabited island nearby to look for help. I don't know why he stripped down to his underwear, but that's an important part of the story people need to know about, don't you think? 
I assume it was so you could swim better. I think so, yeah. But the idea that he gets down is like, right, lads, first thing we're going to do, <laughs> just strips off. He's like, okay, I'm going for a swim. See you guys in a bit. Whenever I hear that sentence, it's always the Bruce Almighty way of doing it. After getting to the island, discovering that it too was uninhabited and had no real supplies that they can make use of, McKennedy swam back to his friends, they all drank coconut milk, and when that ran out, decided they had to make their way to another island in the distance. Luckily, this one was inhabited, and Kennedy was able to get the help of some friendly natives who helped him flag down a nearby American ship that was passing by. Do you know how Kennedy flagged down this passing American ship? He got his pistol and just fired it wildly into the air. But remember, this happened while he was in his underwear, so... He flagged down a passing ship and they looked overboard and they saw, wait, there's a guy over there in his underwear, surrounded by island natives, firing a handgun into the air. Like, that looks like a fucking party. We need to see what's going on. I just like the idea that they look overboard and just see a guy in his underwear firing a handgun into the air and go, man, that guy, he either needs help or booze. Either way, we've got to check out what's going on. When Kennedy and his friends were rescued, he was, of course, immediately awarded a medal for heroism. In typical Kennedy fashion, when later asked how he won the medal for heroism, he replied simply, it was easy, they cut my boat in half. That's a good line, isn't it? That's a good line. Absolutely. It is. It's such a good one-liner. Just imagine. So, President Kennedy, would you mind telling us how you won your medal? Oh, it was easy. They cut my boat in half. Okay, great. <laughs> but no, he said it's so like, here's this awesome story about this awesome dude who did something awesome, which is awesome. Awesome. I'm still disappointed that you're running out of t-shirts. I know, it's bad, in it? I'm really gonna have to shill the shit out of this like, comment, subscribe. Please, please just like, one like, one comment and one subscription and maybe even ring the bell. You can help me buy more t-shirts. Alternatively, what I would like to do if it's ever got like super popular is people send me shitty t-shirts. It would be good. I would love that. And what I really like is the crappy ones that companies send. I would love one from like, because my brother's got one and he refuses to give me one. So he knows I'm going to wear it in one of these because he works for a company that repairs trucks. And I'm like, please get me one of your t-shirts because it's just got a big truck on it. And it just says in it, and it's so stupid. So I can have one now. Alternatively, I would wear ones that people design. I love stupid t-shirts. I must spend a significant portion of my income when I walk through. I like to stop going to H and M because I walk in and I see dumb shit t-shirts. I'm like, oh my god. I was in H and M the other day, and do you know those stupid romper things? That like, not a romper. What are they? They're, it's the same thing babies wear, where when you're changing their nappy, they clip here at the the gooch for girls. Oh, I know which ones you mean. Yeah, and there was, they're having them with um, like Slayer and metal bands on it. And I looked at it, I don't know what to make of this. One, it's some of that a baby wears, but it's for a fully grown adult. Two, it's clearly for a very specific kind of adult who enjoys a specific lifestyle. And I don't think these people like Slayer. So I don't know what to make of it. I don't like those things, they freak me out. Because the only time I've ever seen him before is when he's like changed my sister's nappy. So my girlfriend that I had a few years ago, she had one and it really freaked me out the first time I saw it. She said, oh, do you, would you like to take it off? I went, well, not really. So last time I took one of these off, love, it had a shitty nappy in it. And she just completely, completely killed her mood and she refused to wear it ever again. We're in our battery. Okay. Before we sign off, Carl, tell me where you're on. Oh, oh shit, yeah, I forgot that. Um, no, basically I got bit by a dog, if you remember. A couple of years ago, back, I think it was about eight years old. And the bite was to the bone. And I think we can see that in there. Does it show up? Eh. Yeah, that, was t that sucked. And I never noticed any problems with it for years and years and years and years. Why would you? You're a kid. You know, you just, I've lived with it for my whole life. It wasn't until I got to about 15 and I tried to learn to play the guitar. And I noticed I have no grip in this hand. Like, I can pick things up, I can use it, I can type, I can hold a pen, and all that sort of thing. Look, it's my left hand. But I can't grip something strongly. So, I can't bar frets on guitar, so that sucks. You know, my theory is I think it's the tendon or something. I don't know what muscle's here, but it's, I'm presuming it's the one that controls your fingers. I can't do it. But another thing that I notice, and you'll notice this in every video I do now, my finger, or my, my little finger, if you look, splays out more. And I don't know why, I'm presuming it's because the muscle that holds it in isn't as strong as it is in that hand. So you will notice in videos when I make hand gestures that this little finger here splays out more. And now you'll never be able to unsee that.